Hi folks, well tonight I've got a really big job in the, in the mill as you can see 12 inches by 8 and a, eight and a bit I'm going to face this, I've got to face that and I've got, well machine it all over Here we are on the second cut. It's just cutting in that far corner as you can see uh, and it's quite noisy as you will hear. Not too bad, not cutting over here. Yeah, I might have to dress that far edge off with a file because there's, uh, I'm right on the limit of the Y axis there to get the full width in with the cutter. I've got to maybe move this a little further over this way but I'm not too concerned, it's very little if any, you can just see over here, um, that's, there's a lot of distortion where the plate was guillotined there, so it's probably okay. Well there you see the finished surface, uh, it's just a little bit here that's not machined, I'll, I'll blend that in and I'll also grind these down a little bit. The, the welding here is extremely hard, you can see it's very bright. Uh, it just seems to really be extremely tough stuff. Um, either way, I should have maybe heated everything up before I started machining it, but the, the cutters cope with it okay. It just makes a lot of noise when it goes on there. Uh, next process will be to rip machine a datum on the, along this edge so that I know that I've got a square surface here. And then um, I've got to think about machining this surface square to this, so that's the next step after I've got a datum to work from. It's it, it's a big piece of metal, really big, so I don't know how I'm going to machine that bit. I'll figure something out though. Well there we see the setup for the next phase of the operation which is, to, oh, I didn't notice that there, to machine this face here. I'll just take this plate out of the way. <coughs> These are just added to give the whole setup a bit more rigidity. I haven't got a decent angle plate to bolt this to. Um, I'm using once again my 5C collar holder with a vertical face on that through bolted on from two holes in the back here. So I'll go into uh, Pathpilot and we'll uh, set up to run a facing cut across here and dress that off. So we're just starting the first pass and you can hear it's just touching the metal here. It doesn't seem to be too bad in terms of being out of true. see from the cut over on the far corner that it's only going to take two passes of 10 though, which isn't bad for welding work considering how primitive the setup was for planting everything together when I welded it and it's not bad. So it, it, uh, no, it's going to take another one. There's a little bit in the corner here that's slightly off but never mind. Definitely the last pass, there's just a tiny bit here that hasn't been covered. That's 30 thou taken off altogether, which isn't too bad. I'll just stop the machine when it gets to here and I'll dress the rough edges off with a file before I take it out of the planting area. It's much easier than that. So what I'm pleased with that next is to do the sides so the triangle there. Well, that's the machine set up to do the sides of this thing. As you can see, it's a big job to, to mill, but it's getting there. One more side to do, and then maybe take some metal off these blocks that are holding those tubes in place. And once that's done, I'll put it back in the machine and bore the holes through there. That's a bit of tube, so hopefully I'll selected a decent size that I can get a hole right through without it touching the sides but my welding is not that good so there might be some difficulties.
there we have the first side, well the first of the two sides that to be done, nicely flattened off and that face is done, the bottom face just this lower face under here to do and then boring out the holes for the other plate which swings. So I'm just drilling the holes in this plate using Pathpilot Conversational. I had a few problems with the drill and I might have more problems when it breaks through because this is this tube here is very slightly out of centre. Anyway we'll see what happens when I've done it all. Hopefully it'll be fine. So here we are just finishing the last of the, the holes in this thing. It seems to have gone okay. A little a few problems initially with the half inch drill which is a little bit blunt and it kept slipping in the truck. And once I find the truck up and reset everything it was fine. So this is going well and the holes seem to be reasonably in centre on the blocks of metal that are welded to the side. There's one this this hole here I thought would give trouble but it didn't on the other side so hopefully it won't on this. There you can see the finished angle plate type thing that I'm making and uh, I'm just finishing drilling this which is going to be the table that rides up and down or hinges from the one of the two lower holes. I will, uh, I had a few problems with a blunt spot drill that had been chipped however I managed to get it resharpened again on my tool and cutter grinder without too much trouble and we'll start and see what it goes like. I'll just hit the start cycle and we'll see see how it goes. And the first thing I notice is I've still got the machine set in manual. You can see this is with I've had to cut the speed right back because there's very little lateral, very little lateral support on the lug. However, it, it, it cuts through. It's okay. It's a self-sharpened one as well. Probably not the best, but it, it's working. And I know it. It got through the holes at the bottom, all right. So I'm, I'm happy with it. This hole here and this hole here um, provide a means of locking the table at different angles. And there you see the, the table, that's it in a fully down position. I can mount it flat on the table from here so I can tilt the table up here. I might, might cut away some of this to get a little more, although I can always take the rod off I suppose. Yeah, I can mount it two different ways, so it's quite versatile, really, and it's it's fairly solid. We'll see what it's like in action. I'm, I'm only going to be using it for doing some drilling work, which won't put a great deal of load on it. Well, there you can see what I've been aiming at. Rotary table will go on here, and it can be adjusted for up and down on this slotted link. Obviously, the link's a bit short to get any higher than this angle. 
well it will go a little bit higher maybe another five or ten degrees the main thing for me is I want to be able to mount it in <coughs> in the vertical position with it set back this way so that the the axis of the table is pointing up over sorry is yeah I want it to let me get this right I do want it to go that way <laughs> and it'll go the correct amount that I need to the, the other yes I do need it to go that way sorry I do need it to go that way because I'm doing some hubs and the spokes come in at this sort of angle so I need to be perpendicular okay well I finally finished making my adapter my adjustable angle plate so that I can mount the 8 inch rotary table which I bought when I first got the mill in this position and also alter the tilt on the table uh, this is it here, it's pretty basic but it can be mounted vertically and it can be mounted in the horizontal position and by the, the length of these links is not very long however if I made some longer ones I could you know increase the angle of tilt by quite an amount the reason I made it is I've got a job which I need to drill down at an angle into uh, the holes the holes in it at an angle and the only way I can think of doing it is putting it in a table that I can tilt as you can see it's quite heavy but it tilts back up easily and if I just nip up one of these bolts before it drops and then you can see it's now tilted back at about 15 degrees maybe it's a little more it might vibrate a bit but for drilling and light milling it'll be fine it's just an alternative to the the tilting rotary which yes I'd love to have but I can't afford I suppose if you made this from castings and got it all rigid and put more support on the plates you might get a bit more rigidity also if you thicken these arms out which I could do made them a little bit stiffer on the hinge points but basically it's fine for what I want this shaft runs right through here and there's a there's a I don't know if I can get it in there but you can see a tube runs along the bottom and that allows me to tighten that up without bending the angle plate it's all constructed from 10 mil steel if I had some thicker section it would be stiffer but it's a, all around it's quite a weight it's a hell of a weight lifting this uh, rotary onto it but once it's on there it looks okay the next thing will be to try it out so once I get round to doing that I've got a few drawings to make and so on and get some things approved before I go for it when I do I'll take some shots of it in action okay well I've finally got the adapter plate that I made fitted onto the the front of the rotary and if I just put this camera on your tripod well you can see there this is the adapter it's a screwed adapter and this is the deal that I've got to be a lot come up that way so I've got to be able to swap the the head or the angle of the rotary table and this was the only method I could think of doing that with and I think that looks pretty good I think it'll be sound enough for what I want to do um, I'm well pleased with that so there we go one of the things I forgot to point out was the position of the stepper motor on the 8 inch early Tormac rotary table if you mount it vertically you have to mount it on this side because it will foul the, the switchboard and that's one of the reasons yeah, I believe that Tomac came up with the super switch with this method that I've opted here my centre height's quite a lot higher if need be I could always try and mount this a little bit lower on that plate but I don't think that's necessary I think it's fine the way it is so that's the uh, the story